So you manage to score one of those hard to get 3060 Ti's or 3070's and you have one of those pre-built Dell computers or XPS and you're wondering can I fit this one inside and is the power supply going to be able to power it? So if you are like me and grab one of those deals from Dell pre-configured with all the hardware inside and you couldn't select a different power supply most likely you are stuck with a 360 watt power supply by Dell. Now unfortunately with this power supply you're not going to be able to go anywhere above 3060 as measured in my previous videos and for 3060 Ti and 3070 you're going to have to upgrade to the 460 watt which was the older version or the new one which is 500 watts. So I grabbed one of those 500 watt power supplies and this is going to be a quick tutorial how we're going to upgrade that power supply. Hey guys welcome back to the Hardware SS channel my name is Ivan and today we're going to do a quick tutorial on upgrading the power supply of the Dell G5 or Dell XPS 8940 pre-built computers from 360 watt to 500 watt so we can install a much more powerful graphics card and get some better frames. But before that, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Bob Keys, and Bob Keys is one of my personal favorite websites when I want to go and purchase a license for game or software. Their catalog is quite big. Steam games, Origin games, Uplay games, also PlayStation games for those of you that are on consoles. And of course, software licenses for Windows and Office. You guys know me. I test and build a lot of computers. Just building a new computer right now. Bob Keys has teamed up with me and we are giving up 25% off of every license you want to purchase. So if you followed my previous videos you know that I got three computers from Dell, two G5s and one XPS 8940. They were all pre-built configurations with 1660 Ti or 1660 Super or 1650 Super and the power supplies I could not change. I wanted to upgrade, but because it's the way it's pre-built and it was kind of a one-time deal, you could not upgrade to the 500 watt power supply. Uh, now constantly Dell are out of stock of these power supplies, so unfortunately I have to go to eBay and try to source one. And I've been looking for a couple months and finally I was able to grab one of those for a very reasonable price, $80 for 500 watt power supply. Now there's several different SKUs or different part numbers from Dell, depending on which is the maker of the 500 watt power supply. So I'm going to list all of them in the description of this video so you can see and search by this part number. There are several different makers, Chikoni, Delta, Lighton. So the one I grabbed was made by Chikoni, it's 500 watt. And this power supply is great if you want to get 3060 Ti or if you want to get 3070. Put it in and get some better frames. Let's go into the tutorial and we're going to talk about it in the conclusion. This is the Chikoni made. 500 watt power supply, Dale standard. And this one, uh, what's different here is you have a dedicated cable for eight or six plus two pin for PCI Express. And you have an additional six pin. So if you got a card that requires eight plus six, you're good to go. But because uh, 3060 Ti and 3070 are only requiring 8 pin, we're just going to be using this and we're going to be good to go. In this quick tutorial, we're going to just replace the, the stock 360 watt power supply uh, with this 500 watt. And uh, first thing I'm going to tell you before you start disconnecting everything is just take a couple pictures so you can uh, know exactly where uh, the cables are routed. And I do this all the time myself just to make sure that everything is routed the same way uh, the stock power supply was routed. We don't have too many cables in this power supply, so it's not that complicated and it's not fatal. If you don't take any pictures, obviously you can go to my video or somebody else's and follow the guide and see how it's done. But first thing first, I'm just gonna remove the graphics card. Uh, that stock uh, 1650 Super, here it is. This is the modest looking 1650 super that right now goes for about 350 dollars imagine that and then from here we're going to just trace the cables a couple of clips in the front here that hold the cables together uh, they're routed underneath and goes all the way on the back side so that's going to be easier for us to do not too complicated unclipping these uh, plastic brackets or holders and that's going to release the cables from where they are same thing we do here with the second one and then 
that's the first six pin power we're gonna unplug from the motherboard and then the other one are two by four pins let me reposition they're located here behind the tower cooler now it's going to be a little bit uh, tight squeeze since we installed this tower cooler but still not that bad and that's actually one of the easiest upgrades on these power supplies uh, because uh, they're so small and there's only several cables running through them you can uh, easily route the cables around and kind of free them off and also the SATA cable SATA power cables are running from the motherboard instead of the power supply so that's another kind of easier way that you can manage these cables all power supply cables are disconnected now we have three screws on the back we're just going to remove these from the power supply we're going to reuse the same screws obviously for the new one and there's a little push button that's going to release the power supply from the back side you kind of push it down and from here just grab it and release it so there it is the 360 watt power supply with only one six pin pci express connector uh, 360 watts are plenty for up to 3060 but you got to use the adapter you've seen my previous videos so now taking this to the side plug in the other one same exact way it's very easy and very fast first cable you want to route is this long two by four cable that goes all the way to the back side it's easy to route the cables again follow your pictures or my video make sure to go through the clips the longer two by four pin cpu connector goes right here and it's clipping very nicely in the xps on the g5 this cage is not here then the routing is going to be even easier because this cable is going to fall down onto kind of the the back of the chassis make sure everything is clipped and plugged in nicely and correctly and then from here in the back side just route these cables through the clips just like they were before and we're finally ready to install our graphics card but because i'm going to be upgrading the graphics card here i'm just going to put my rtx uh, 2070 see how it looks so now the asus rtx 2070 is going in instead of the 1650 super clip it in and then we plug in our 6 plus 2 8 pin pci express connector clip it in place actually here i can do some cable management and probably tie that six pin pci express connector with a zip tie because i really don't need it i'm only using the eight pin so quickly i'm going to zip tie it in the back here all right just like that now i have the rtx uh, 2070 right here which definitely is going to bump the performance a lot from uh, our modest gtx 1650 super and now with this power supply 500 watts everything is nicely done all i need to do is just put those screws in the back and we're going to be good to go so at the end everything plugged in cables routed we have the 500 watt power supply right here rtx 2070 plugged in with the 8 pin pci express connector all the other cables are routed nicely and tightly i love these cases they're having a lot more room than the pavilion cases without that side shroud uh, front perforation is good enough so we can do modifications and one of my future videos we're going to do a 12 millimeter fan modification right here in the front but for now i think this is going to be it now we're going to go ahead turn it on see how it performs that was the tutorial guys super easy just make sure to follow my instructions or take a couple pictures before you do it yourself just route the cables nice and tightly around there's not anything special and actually this is much easier to a lot of custom computers that don't have modular power supplies because you have to reroute those cables behind the motherboard tray and do all that stuff but here because everything is open right in front of you the whole process is less than 30 minutes um, and now i have an extra 360 watt power supply which maybe in the future if something happens to the other ones i can put this back and be back on business without having to buy another one um, ideally i would have loved to have you know one of those 500 watt power supplies or two or three maybe bought directly from dell but unfortunately they are constantly out of stock so i could not get that from them and ebay is always a great source to find new or used power supplies and 
The one I bought was marked as used, but I did not see any dust on it. I did not see any dust and even inside. I tried to blow the dust with compressed air. There was no dust. So maybe it was just, uh, you know, turned on and be used for a couple of days or whatever it is, but it was definitely not used for a long, long period of time. And considering the 500 watt power supplies are not that new, uh, the older version, like last year, they were supplying 460 watts. Uh, these are not that old. So anything under $100, go ahead and grab it, upgrade it, and you can get a better graphics card. That's pretty much it, guys. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that bell notification to get notified for every single video review coming your way. And until next time, guys, you have a wonderful day.